A gradual ascent to complexity from non-living matter is something that Darwinian evolution absolutely requires. You see, contemporary evolutionary theory has been evolving for a long time. In fact, spontaneous generation, the idea that life can come from non-life, was a structured part of ancient Greek philosophy, and it's been proposed by both pagans and atheists long ago. You see, it wasn't so long ago that people looked at a simple puddle of mud and they would propose that because there are so many frogs around, well, the mud must be birthing the frogs. Yeah. As the Arabic logic and reasoning began to propagate, the Greek origin theories consequently faded from view. But the pendulum began to swing back toward the ancient view of evolution during the early 1800s, when Erasmus Darwin, Charles Darwin's grandfather, began riding around in a carriage with a big everything from shells written on it as a glorified bumper sticker. Now in the mid-1800s, Charles Darwin spent years on a ship writing those naturalistic observations. His seminal work on the origin of species included a classic bait-and-switch tactic that worked phenomenally. He would expound on the observable interspecies change, or the variety that empirical science supports, and then he would follow with the idea that any major kind of animal could also evolve to an entirely different kind. He portrayed the preposterous idea of Aristotelian spontaneous generation in a light that would be accepted by his scientific peers. To believe in ancient Greek myths and the subsequent theories of evolution requires quite a leap of faith. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. Like what you're seeing? Want more? Be sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as we put up new videos and content.